What's up, y'all? Sorry I haven't posted in a while, but I've been on a long adventure. In three days, I flew from the northern tip of California's Central Valley to the Mexican border and back home. It took a lot of planning and preparation, required a lot of support from my friends and family, and most importantly, was super fun. Last year, I had the opportunity to cross the Central Valley from east to west. It blew my mind how my glider could bridge this gap and planted the seed of an idea that I should also try to span it north to south. I started to see the opportunity take shape in the SkySight forecast. There were going to be clouds down the entire length of the valley, perhaps a little low, but I started planning a flight from Benton Air Park in Redding. The day started with fog, which is unusual, and the clouds were lower than forecast. To make this happen though, I needed to get going. It did not look possible to immediately climb onto the Mendocinos, so I launched south into the valley clouds. Climbs were weak as expected. They slowly got better as I plotted south, but the bigger issue was that in the ground west of the Mendocinos was always 100% shaded. I've been caught and landed out several times in similar situations. At only 4,000 feet, I judged it as a very likely land out to chase a path into the mountains. Hearing everyone from Williams in the convergence over the mountains was, uh, motivating? After passing Sutter Butte, I wanted to make my way west. First, there's the Sacramento International Airspace I would need to avoid, and I also still hope to find a path onto the mountains. I would soon find out this was going to be the hardest part of the entire journey. I was still less than 4,000 feet above the ground, and the few clouds that existed to the west didn't really work. My last opportunity was a large cloud under shade above a field. I went for it with fingers crossed. I was just 1,000 feet above the ground when I arrived and really felt the pressure to find the thermal feeding this cloud. If I couldn't find it, I would need to prepare to land in the field and try to restart the motor. At best, it would work and get me to the next thermal and cut my flight into two. At worst, I'd need to land in the field and start a whole other adventure. But sure enough, in the sun, on the edge of the cloud, there was a thermal. I skirted the edge of the Sacramento airspace, heading south to cross the delta. I had never before made this crossing. I understood it to be difficult, and in planning was most concerned about how to do this. It ended up being nearly the easiest part of the flight. There was a clear line to follow. I could just make out the Golden Gate Bridge some 80 kilometers to my west. Near Byron, I connected with the first convergence of the day, finally, and started running faster. Looking at the time remaining, it was clear that I was going to fail my original plan and come up a couple hundred kilometers short. The next good alternative for me was Avenal. Yeah, I think so. This was the last day of their contest this year, and if I could land before everyone left, there was a good chance I could catch a ride. I caught another nice line of convergence at Los Banos and ran it down into the Idria Valley over the Pinoch Hills. This one is very familiar to me and I was grateful for a break in the stress. Coming over the Idria Valley, I realized it looked very small. It used to seem big to me in years prior. 
probably because it's surrounded by hills and is generally rough and inhospitable. But now I saw it shrunken under the passing years and previous crossings. Funny how that works. Final glide to Avenal from San Benito Mountain was straightforward. It was past 6 p.m. and I could see the clouds south towards my original goal were already mush. I failed. How do you feel that I didn't complete my task? I used to be very worried when I first started gliding about how everyone else might think of me if I landed out or didn't achieve my task or whatever. I don't even need to wait to read the comment section. It was fun to even try it and it doesn't even matter that I didn't complete the task. It was still a fun adventure. Thanks a lot to Will for waiting for me to land and drive me back home. My car and trailer were still in Reading, so I found a cheap rental car and drove to go pick them up and bring them back. During these few days, the forecast started to look like continuing the adventure might be possible. Zach first pinged me to see if I might want to join him in Warner Springs. Yes, of course I'm in. Rami has a FOMO nerve, so I told him not to worry. We'd send him some pictures, then he was in. We would have three from Hollister and me from Avenal going south to meet Zach. It was a very tough start from Avenal. It's often hard to climb up the mountains onto the convergence, and that was the case today. I used up the entire battery trying to stay aloft long enough to climb out. I would be a pure glider for the next two days. South of Avenal, the convergence line was banging. There were tiny wisps of clouds marking its location down to the La Panza range. Past Mount Pinos, I finally saw Zach and Jim on Florm. Hey man, welcome to the party. <laughs> the convergence was very wide and powerful all the way down to Crystal, and I raced hard to keep from losing ground to them both. Hi, Julia. Sierra. Hey, got you inside. Los Angeles was visible here. First time I've seen it from a glider. As I understood it, final glide to Warner Springs is often done from San Gorgonio Mountain, but it was overdeveloped. Yeah, I think they're looking blown up already, so I'm going to stay in the north. All right. I'm going to run the San Gabriel, and then probably push a little bit to the north around uh, the Cajon Pass, and then connect with those high clouds out there. I'm just going to follow you. We ended up going farther east to try and get around it and saw a huge wall of what looked like Virga. After passing it, I took another climb near Palm Springs to put me on final glide. It was an entire hour of final glide and mostly uneventful, except that my feet felt like two blocks of ice by that point. Good thing I brought Lord of the Rings with me on this final glide. Everyone made it in, and we tied down, ate dinner, and got some rest for the next day. Thanks so much, Zach, for the support on the ground. The final day promised to be interesting. It looked like we'd be able to make a run to the Mexican border before turning around for home. So we took an early tow at 10.15 a.m., and sure enough, there were already clouds down to the border. We Glide Coach always complains that I'm running too slow. So I decided to make it into an experiment to set the McCready higher with more aggressive guessing about thermal strength and ended up cruising as fast as I could. Just flying like 120 knots. 110. This quickly backfired as I arrived lower than I would have liked to San Ysidro Mountain and had to take a weaker climb to get back into the good stuff. This put Rami 20 kilometers ahead of me and I would spend the entire rest of the day trying to catch up. 
The clouds were low over San Gorgonio when I arrived, so I kept the cruise speed to 80 knots or so to make sure that I could stay connected. The headwind was quite strong, about 15 knots, which slowed things down. I tried to keep a target of five knots climb in my mind and took slower climbs only when I was unsure what might be ahead. After making it through the Cajon Canyon, conditions were strong for a while and I sped up and took strong climbs. Passing Palmdale, however, there was a decision to make. The most direct line back to Avenal was a long blue glide towards the grapevine. There were a few clouds there and they were high but I would surely lose a lot of altitude getting there. There was a nice line of clouds north towards the Hatchapi, so that would definitely work without needing to get low, but it was very out of the way. The final option was well-marked convergence going deep into the mountains to the west. This was surely the fastest, but still pretty out of the way, and also over high terrain. Rami and Ben opted for the convergence to the west. I had been making steady progress catching up to them all day, and this was my opportunity. I decided for the direct route towards the grapevine. YOLO. It was not a very pleasant glide. The air was sinky and I had a headwind the entire way. It got much worse as I got closer to the pass where the air was funneling through and I lost a bit more altitude than I hoped for. I'm over here south of the grapevine climbing slowly through 6,700. I didn't have much margin over the hill. However, I found a four knot climb, then a five knot climb that put me back in a good spot. I could now pull ahead after an entire day of trying. The California Valley was ahead with a very juicy marked convergence line. I love this valley and it usually offers excellent conditions for fast flying. So I radioed ahead to other folks who had just flown there to ask what the climbs were like. Tango after Romeo Glider 8. What uh, average climbs were you getting on this line? I'm climbing at 5 right now. Perfect, I'm a 3D5. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and Sure enough, the first climb was 6 knots. So I resolved to continue my wee glide experiment and just book it harder than I ever have. With my destination Avenal and final glide, I finally met back up with Rami near Center Peak and hoped to share his final glide climb back to Hollister. Okay, Tango Golf, looks like you got this one. I'm gonna say goodbye for the day. Once we found it, I said goodbye and went back to find Ben and share a circle with him. By this point, my avionics battery was very low and I was thinking of a victory dinner at Harris Ranch. So I pointed my nose at the dirt and set my good ship down on the ground once more. This trip required extra planning compared to my normal out and return flights. Having everything set in stone is too restrictive, but having nothing planned makes me anxious and less likely to try. First, where were viable places to land with nearby lodging? I thought about Taft, Nukuyama, Tehachapi, and Avenal, which all have good options nearby. I could also probably have begged someone to come pick me up from the Avenal contest. And how to get back to my car in Reading? I found the cheapest and most convenient option to be a one-way rental car. So as long as I could find my way to enough civilization for a rental car, it seemed no issue. For the leg to Warner Springs and back, I also wanted to pack extra clothing and basic toiletries. Space in the JS3 is very precious, so I packed all of this into a vacuum bag and removed the air to compress it. I never considered a 12 volt charger for the avionics batteries because there's an onboard converter from the res batteries. However, I used the res batteries completely and I found myself wishing I had brought a small charger. I have been working on a way to carry the res battery charger with me so I can even charge the main batteries and extend my travel indefinitely. Here's a sneak preview. I would like to thank Zach again for helping with the planning and making sure we had a place to spend the night and the means to get there. And I'd like to thank Rami for getting me started with this next level type of planning. 
Straight out crewless flights are so much fun. I didn't achieve all my goals, but it was a blast to get out there and push myself. I flew past Mount Pinos for the first time. I flew across the Delta for the first time, and I connected different segments of flights I had done many times before into one continuous journey. I learned many new things, and most of all, loved sharing the adventure with my friends. See you in the skies.